What is up, everybody? Here once again at Pace 2023. My name is Zojelix. I'm back, and I'm here with... I am the Spectacular Slade. And we're running the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King, Any Percent Co-op. Uh, so... Yeah, we're going to be jumping in pretty quickly right away while we kind of explain things that are going on throughout the run. I'm going to be picking Legolas here, but the timing doesn't actually start until we gain control of our characters. So, ah, dang uh, it. Slade, what are you doing? You know what? It'll work out. I've No, you're not this. supposed to pick Gimli. Why not? Gimli's fun. He's slow. No, he's not. No, it'll work out. Trust Slade, me. We, when you never practiced this. You don't know that. You don't practice on your own. Okay, I'm not going to confirm or deny, but, like, you don't know that. I, no, I, Slade, this is a workout. Just, just trust me on this. I, mm, you, fine, fine. Hey, fine. I throw, hey, fine. I throw for it's content. Fine. It's a thing I do. That's true. That's true. All right, fine. We'll deal with it. We'll, fine. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, this is The Return of the King. Um, this game was developed in 2003. Uh, it is, follows the events of the movie, as you can see. Uh, we're going to be starting in the Paths of the Dead. So this game is split into three different paths. There's Path of the King, Path of the Wizard, and Path of the Hobbit. And for some reason in co-op, you were stuck to doing Path of the King first, and then Path of the Wizard, and then Path of the Hobbit. Uh, which, like, cool, whatever, but single player, you can do the paths in whatever order, so it doesn't it really make sense kind of that they break didn't... the sequence of events. Yeah, we're going to be jumping back and forth between movie, between the end of the Two Towers and the Return of the King. Like, right now, we're in, like, the middle of the Return of the King. Yep. So, don't use this as a way to learn Lord of the Rings lore. Please do not use this game to learn Lord of the Rings lore. It, it just won't work. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't work. No, time will start when we gain control of our characters. So, that'll be happening here in, like, five, four, three, two, one... Go. Yeah, see, look, so, I'm Gandalf. Oh. Gimli wasn't what? even there. But you picked Gimli. Oh, I know. But what? Okay, whatever. Um, so, yeah, uh, backwards hopping through fog is fast. Um, and in case you guys are curious, we'll explain it at the end of this level. But there is an intentional glitch that we do use to play as Gandalf here, even though he is not technically playable. Um, it is a co-op exclusive glitch. It is really, really nice to be able to have uh, because it makes this run significantly safer and faster because you'll learn very quickly that Gandalf is quite overpowered, uh, ignoring the fact that in his first fight, I did all the work as Legolas. Um, Gandalf, I swear, is really overpowered. Well, later in the game. Right now, he's just a bit squishy. He is quite squishy, but it's fine. Um, so a lot of this run is going to be utilizing our various abilities um, to get through the game quickly. They're, the only glitch that you will be seeing uh, throughout this run is that character wheel glitch, um, which honestly is something that I've come to love quite a bit in speedruns, is ones that aren't, like, aren't necessarily completely and totally broken, but it's just like there's some breaking of it, but for the most part, it's just getting through the game really quickly, which I know that, like, is kind of counterproductive to the fact that I ran Lego The Hobbit, which is, like, one of the most broken speedruns out there. Um, but it, it's fine. Just don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, in this run, we are going... There's a lot of backwards hopping. It's The movement in this level is really, really cool. This level is actually my favorite in the entire speedrun just because the movement is super sick Ow. Uh, and the the movement's fun and the fights are really interesting to do as well. Um, so we're kind of just going to be going through this level. One of the things we have to kind of be watching for as well is the amount of EXP that we're going to be getting. We really want to try and maximize the amount of EXP per level that we get uh, just because if we can do that, then that will make the... Um, get our abilities faster, but we don't also want to spend a lot of time taking fights, because if we spend a lot of time taking fights, then that's slow. So we're just going to beat up enemies where we can that are like required. Remember, you don't have to kill these guys. And then we can just go in. We have this next fight here. There are three required fights in this level, and that is that deal with these 
uh, dead people. Oh, I totally thought we killed them all. Oh, that's a little awkward, but that's totally fine. And this is a captain. Oh, I didn't get those arrows, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, and um, this game, one of the interesting aspects on the co-op side of things for this run is we don't get the joys of split screen in this game. We are in a forced camera the whole time, which means that we are Ow, just, uh, okay, up. let's go, let's go. We're in a forced camera the whole time, which means if one of us gets too far away, then the other player will get stuck. Uh, remember to bubble these enemies because that will help zone them off better. All right, let's go. Um, and then one of the things that you'll be seeing a lot in this run is this thing called perfect mode. And you can see Gandalf was, just got out of it, but right next to our health bars, there's that circle. That is actually a damage meter, and that will determine how much EXP we get per kill that we get. So if we get a lot of damage off without getting hit, that meter will fill up. And if it fills up all the way, we get into perfect mode, which is where we do the maximum amount of damage and get the maximum amount of EXP per kill, um, which is really, really nice for like later sections of the run when we really just need to optimize getting a lot of EXP. Uh, but for the most part, we are just going to be kind of using our various abilities here. Uh, as Legolas, I am glowing red. I can, t I can tell you that that is completely normal. Uh, that's me using my special ability, Devastating Mode, and it allows me to do a lot more damage um, and get my Perfect Mode meter filled up quicker. I did it a little bit early. Normally, I want to kind of wait to do it because the enemies will start spawning in just a little bit faster, but it's perfectly fine. Because you can see now, I'm getting like double the enemies, which is where if I would have waited to do my devastating mode, it would have worked out a little bit better. But ended up not really being that big of a deal. And that ends this fight, and we are just going to run all the way to the end of the level. And that will end the first level, which is Paths of the Dead. And the biggest downside to running... So, Return of the King has like a thousand different ways you can speed run this game. It actually is kind of insane, the amount of categories that we have come up with. Um, shout outs to category extension leaderboards. Um, but basically, the unfortunate part with running any percent on console is you're stuck with these unskippable FMV cutscenes, which is not really that big of a deal, but in an hour and a half run, it does take up a decent chunk of time. But thankfully, in a marathon setting, we can use it to explain a lot of different things without having to worry about it too much. Yeah. Um, so at the end of every single level, the game is, has to go through and calculate all of the EXP that we get in the level. And there is no way to speed this up, unfortunately, if you're playing on console. If you're playing on PC, you can speed it up, which is one of the like, joys of playing on PC. Plus, we did develop shoutouts to a member of the community, Sabuline Horizon. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name pronunciation, but they created a way to skip the FMV cutscenes, which saves about 13 minutes in the run. So if you don't like the unskippable cutscenes, run the PC port. The only downside to the PC port is it can be prone to crash based on your PC build. Um, so, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to run this game. It's really, really cool, and it is super fun. So I highly recommend it to anybody, especially, like, if you're looking at doing co-op runs. Let's, Let's go. go! So what we just did there is something that is very, very, very rare to happen, hence why I didn't really explain it. Uh, nothing. Um, but we skipped the EXP tally screen, so we don't have to... Um, Dang it. Oh, shoot, I hit the wrong button. Uh, so we don't have to worry about, uh, like, sitting through another EXP screen where, like, if you're playing like Legolas and Gimli, then um, you can then skip the cutscenes. So here is that character wheel glitch. You can see he's hovering over Gimli, but he selects Gandalf. So what happens is when I select my character, if I move the control stick to the right at the same exact time that I'm hitting A, it will select Legolas, but then shift it over one more, which then allows us to play as characters that you normally wouldn't be able to play as during the run. So theoretically, with the use of character wheel glitch, you could play like as Frodo, even though you can only use him at the end of the run, but that sounds miserable. Yeah, so because this, hobbits be real squishy. They do. So this is a King of the Dead. Um, we are going... 
it's going to be a pretty simple fight. Uh, I'm going to be shooting him with four charged arrows. And then, oh, I missed a charge shot. That's really bad. Um, Good job. Okay, uh, that's kind of spooky. But we should be okay, maybe. I honestly don't know. We'll be cutting it close because we're going for a quick kill on this boss. It is like a very, very... Oh, you didn't kill him. It is a very difficult strat to get. So... I'm really kind of hoping that this works out for us. I missed another charge shot. I don't think this is going to work. But we will find out. So this quick kill is very difficult to do on co-op. It's uh, weird because it's a lot easier to do single player. I don't know why it is. Well, I know why it's a lot easier to do it single player because you don't have a second player that can mess up the AI of the King of the Dead. Um, but basically, we're going to try and kill him in this next phase here, which with our damage, it's not looking too likely, but we will find out and see what happens. So now at this point, we just need to uh, spam charge shots on him. We have to do like a very specific rhythm of attacks in order to kill him, but it doesn't always work. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got yes! it! Let's go! Yes! I am so sorry about this camera freak out. This is really bad. <laughs> Holy cow. Good job. That was so spooky. I didn't think we were going to get that. Cut that one close. You're telling me. Wowza. Oh, all right. Now that the panic is over. We can panic again because yep. we have to run away. So now that we've killed the King of the Dead, we're going to be basically doing the Paths of the Dead backwards, but they make it shorter because we have to run away from these falling rocks. If we get stuck and we don't move fast enough, we will die, and we will have to start this whole section over again. Um, it's not, it really isn't that scary when you're a speedrunner, but from a casual perspective, I remember as a kid being like absolutely terrifying, and also ignore the fact that Aragorn disappeared. We won't worry about that. He's, he's fine, I think. Do you think he's fine? I'm sure he'll be fine. I, I, he, sure. He's got the sword, so I think it'll be fine. Don't forget, we have Orc here now. Oh, yeah. Right. So, yeah, we bought an ability at the end of the last level called Orc Hewer. That is Ow. a very, very nice combo. It does a lot of damage, and it takes out enemies, and it fills up our perfect mode actually pretty quickly. And I'm able to use Devastating Mode there as well to do even more damage to basically just ensure that I get perfect mode. Because especially on these, on the Army of the Dead, it can be kind of difficult to do it properly. But as you can see, we've already cut out like a whole massive chunk of uh, the Path to the Dead level. I, I understand why the devs did it because there's a lot less fog you have to deal with. But at the same time, it's still a little weird. So, oop. This is the second fight we have to do. This one is a lot more, like, claustrophobic. Just because there are a lot of enemies in a very small space. And half the time, you can't really out. There we go. Oh, you killed the other captain. Yeah, nice job. I took care of him. So, yeah, that was that fight. Now we have one more fight that is absolutely terrifying because uh, there are going to be... That was scary. I almost got hit by a falling boulder. Um, but there are going to be... A, <laughs> speaking of getting hit by a falling boulder... So remember to back up and bubble right away. Yep. There's a lot of enemies here. And this is where it's great that we've got our abilities because we can get into perfect mode quickly, which then allows us to be able to use a whole lot of attacks at max damage, which takes out enemies quickly as well as gives us a whole lot of EXP. And with the addition of Orc Hewer, you can see Slade is already back into perfect mode. And now we only have three more enemies we have to take out. And I'm back into perfect mode again because of Orc Hewer, which is great. Oh, 
And that's the end of the King of the Dead. And Gandalf just disappears. Don't worry. Uh, yep. Aragorn's don't, back, by the way. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't worry about it, though. Where's Gimli? He's um, never been there the whole time. I think he got too scared and ran away. You know, he did say, well, this is certainly unheard of. A dwarf would go, uh, an elf would go underground when a dwarf dare not. So Yeah. Maybe he, he just committed to that. He just commi- he committed to the bit. Also, you're probably wondering where the heck the music is. We turned the music off because it is copyrighted, and I don't want GSA to have to worry about a copyright strike. So it's kind of a rough scenario with running Lord of the Rings stuff because music typically gets copyright claimed all the time. I have fought many a battles to prevent that from happening, but it, it just kind of is what it is. So, as you can see, we get bonus EXP at the end of every single level. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was Dang hitting it. the wrong button. Why? Because I'm kind of dumb. So, this is what we skipped last time. We weren't able to skip it this time, but that's okay. Fog so, of War, right? here, uh, Fog of War and... I think that... And Light of the Pilgrim is what you want. Got it. Oh, Fog of War is right there. Yeah, no. Two. So, yeah. So, Slade is going to be buying a few abilities here. So he's going to be buying Fog of War, otherwise known as You Shall Not Pass. Um, and then he will, and then he bought Light of the Pilgrim, which is a ranged ability upgrade. I bought a ranged ability upgrade earlier, so I, my arrows are stronger, and it's going to be great. So now we're going into the Southern Gate. Um, basically what is happening, this is a level that is unique to the game. Um, this it's a fairly level, simple level. Yeah, it is. So there's a gate. We just have to run through it. Not really too much happens in this level. Yeah, um, I don't know why they actually added it. But it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. It's just kind of not there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this time to test and see like how far we can go before the game like gets us stuck. Yep. So Because once you just run through the gate, we're fine. So it's no big deal. And whoa! Okay, there's a troll now. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Did you get a bootleg version of this game? I did not bootleg this game. I swear this is the version that I brought from home. I I don't know if I believe you. You need to believe me. Why? Because this has never happened before. The fact that we used a bit to say the thing, I don't know if I should be happy with that or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is perfectly normal. Uh. We call this level Orc Mosh Pit because there's a lot of orcs. Uh, we try to avoid fighting as many as possible. We don't like Mosh Pits. Uh, Gandalf is an old man. Uh, he doesn't you can tell oh by the gosh. Hair. Oh gosh. What is going on? Why? I'm fine. I'm fine. I can't see anything, but. Oh! Get that green health. Oh, you I took stole it, it from well, me! I guess this is going to be fun now. I'm almost dead. Oh, there we go. There yeah, we go. There you go. See, you're not, you're not dead. I totally could have pulled out my golem voice there, but I didn't want to freak out my wife. I'm sure she appreciates that. So now we get this terrible camera angle. We just gotta kill these guys. And then we're gonna kill another troll. Ah, oh, yes. Perfect. Or Slade's gonna shoot a wall. Yep. Just need to, there we go, troll is dead. Get out of here. And then we have to wait because... We killed him too fast. We killed him really fast. Well, no, the game has to kind of like actually just like register that he's dead. It spawns this. This is an Oliphant. Uh, Oliphants are, oddly enough, bigger elephants. An Oliphant is not the same as an elephant. Remember that. That's important. Why is that important? Because it is. I'm a lore junkie. Or they are also known as a mumak, and then the plural form of mumak is mumakil. Did you care about that? Probably not. Were we going to tell you anyway? Yes. Yeah. And now we get to open the gate. In case you forgot, that's why we were here. Uh, there. Slade is going to be covering me here. But the gate is now open. We just have to wait for this other cutscene because, as you can see, we get a nice little stroll now to the gate. We don't have to worry about anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh my gosh. Now there's an army of orcs. All right. That's not an army. That's like eight. Okay, it's an army for Gimli. And we can just go and blah. 
Just drop some burning oil on them. Because, you know, as you do. Because as speedrunners, we want to get a lot of kills without actually doing the work. Easy labor. See, people would say that speedrunners are just like super efficient. No, speedrunners are just lazy. They try to figure out the best ways to do things quickly so that way they don't have to sit there and go through the entire thing. Yep, and we're just going to leave Gandalf behind again. He, he somehow caught up last time. I'm sure he'll do it again. He's a wizard. He does as he chooses. Fair enough. You got that reference, right? I did, okay, I did. Okay, thank you. I just made a reference to the Hobbit movie, which might be sacrilegious to do during a Return of the King run. But it's the same universe, it counts. You've also had a baby Yoda on your camera while doing a Return of the King run, so let's that's not, a thing. Let's not talk about that. You, it was your idea, so I'm going to out you in the middle of this audience when, here. Wait, when was this? <laughs> this was a long time ago. You were young. You were dumb. Okay. Um, I don't remember what else you were, but... I wasn't married, I'll say that. That's true. So, uh... Ooh, yeah, this is the end Press of the Press the right button this time. I'm pressing the right button. Stop harassing me. No. Boom. Yay. You got another one. Nothing, right? Or uh, Correct, nothing. My character wheel glitches are kind of on point right now. This is great. Yep, yep. Now, can you just do it when we do the Hobbit section? We will figure that out when we get there. All right. So this level that we're going into is Pelennor <laughs> Fields. This one is kind of an RNG-heavy level. Um, there are a lot of... There's, it, we basically have another mosh pit we have to deal with. Yep. And then we have more Muma kill, and then we have to kill the Witch King. Uh, well, kill the Witch King's beast. Well, you'll figure that out when we actually get there. It's really not too crazy. I, I don't. What am I even saying right now? That, I, that's a good question. That's <laughs> I, a good I, question. You, I'm, you're just kind of rambling. Your lips are moving, but I don't know what you're saying. I'm confused. <laughs> I, never mind. I'm not going to finish that bit. <laughs> if, it hurt to not finish it, but I'm not going to. That's okay. So, yeah, if, if you guys have been enjoying us do this, uh, follow us both on Twitch. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash socialix, or you can follow Suede at Suede? Twitch. What? You said Suede. I said Slade. No, you didn't. You I, said Suede. No, I said Slade. I swore it you said It is at twitch.tv slash the spectacular Slade. We do co-op streams every Monday night, um, well, well, except for this Monday night, because this is our co-op stream. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we typically end up just yelling at each Ow. other. While trying to speedrun a video game. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it, it's very weird. So, yeah, this whole section, the reason why it's very RNG heavy is because we both drain arrows absurdly fast. And the game just kind of decides whether or not it will give you an arrow drop when you need it. So you could have a section that goes really well or really poorly because the game just doesn't want to give you arrow drops. Oh, nice. An arrow drop literally spawned right on top of me. There's an arrow drop up to the left. I see it. So we have to take out 60 enemies, and then we will start doing things. I think I'm shooting a captain, which is a little slow, but that's fine. Cool. I literally used my last arrow to kill the last guy. Let's go. Love it when that happens. So that actually went pretty well. I will definitely accept that. Um, also, this is the last level in the Path of the King that we can do at this point in time. Um, but I'm going to grab these arrows here, and then we're going to shoot a Muma kill. We can lock onto him way back here, which is really nice, because then we can just take him out while he's not even on camera. Again, the screen just shakes horribly violently, but 
Yep. That's just kind of par for the course with this game. And earlier in the run, I used my uh, self to actually block some of the arrows. However, I didn't that time because if I had tried, the camera would have panned and made it much harder to actually shoot it. Uh, um, um. Oh, oh we well. Died. So in this game, you get one death basically per level. Um, that's kind of an unfortunate time to die because it just allows for more enemies to just like show up on my face. But right, it go. ended up being mostly okay. Um, we haven't had a death in a long time, yeah, so that uh, was that very was surprising, very shocking. Your health just like disappeared. I know. Ow. But as you can see, even though we are playing on easy mode because it makes no sense to play in any other difficulty, strats do not change. Um, the game is still very, very, very hard. Um, and it can be very punishing. It looks really easy, but that's just because we have put in an absurd amount of time into this game. So now we're just gonna kill the Witch King here. Cool, the Witch King's dead. Um, you can have be forced to have to do that in multiple cycles, but if you wait until the Witch King like attacks Mary and Eowyn, then you can take him out in one cycle. It was something that for a while we were just like shooting at him and just kind of hoping that it worked, and then it never did uh, until we figured that out. So actually, I think I was the I was the one who made a tutorial on it. I don't know if anybody else figured it out. Maybe somebody else figured it out. I honestly don't know. But either way. That's the end of Pelennor Fields and the end of Path of the King. But we are still going to be following the adventures of Legolas and Gandalf because we're going into Path of the Wizard next. Um, and we're actually going to be... So here we're like past... If, you, if you're a nerd like me who only watches the extended editions, uh, we're like near like the second half of the second disc at this point. Uh, we're going to be going all the way back to the very beginning of the movie. Yep. Uh, to right after the Battle of Helm's Deep that ends in the Two Towers. And we are going to be going to Isengard, guard, guard, guard. And uh, with Gandalf and Legolas to... Actually, no, we're going to the end of the Two Towers at the Attack of the Ants. So yep. we're actually jumping back an entire movie because why not? Yep. Because... I don't know why we would ever, you know... Because, you know, in speedrunning, lore just doesn't matter. I, it's true. You don't speedrun a game. You don't learn lore through watching a speedrun. Mm -hmm. There are... Actually, no, that's not true. There are some games that you can actually learn a decent chunk of lore through watching a speedrun. My mashing was so bad there. It just... My fingers just were not wanting to do the thing. But it's fine. Skipping these is really hard on GameCube because... Uh, wow, I didn't realize that. I didn't level up. Um, uh, Wrath of Arnor. Yep, okay. Um, what? I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, there are games that you can learn lore on, like Final Fantasy or something like that. So, And here, since we're going into Path of the Wizard, we don't actually have to do the character wheel glitch anymore, but we still go for it because doing you know it's fast. that... It, yeah, it allows you to be able... It allows you <laughs> to... Um, <coughs> get through like the, what am I, what are words? It allows you, it saves inputs. So you have less inputs you have to do there to is. get to the character. There it is, so, words are difficult, but. There we go. So one thing that is really great about this run, um, not just from like a co-op perspective, but just from this run in general, is like there's so many different ways that we do this run and so many different strats, but at the same time, this game is very easy to learn. So if, you were, if you've never speedrun a game before, but you played this game as a kid, or maybe you didn't play this game as a kid, this game is super accessible. We have, you can run it on console, we have an emulator board, we have a PC board, and we have category extensions. So if you want like an any percent type feel, but you don't want to deal with the cutscenes, you can do like a category extension. We have like range of percent or the best category extension. We've got second breakfast. Heck um, yeah, where you play as Merry and Pippin the entire time. It's actually such a fun category. Which Pippin is just so broken in this game. He's actually insanely broken. I wish that he In we terms could of use strength, him. he's on par with Gandalf. He's stronger. His, oh, actually. His attacks are the strongest out of every character in the game. Well, Pippin's never mind. Pippin's attack is the strongest. It's so weird. Um, but yeah, so I highly recommend picking up this game. Join the community. The Lord of the Rings community is fantastic. 
Uh, we recently were able to have a community spotlight on uh, Hobbit Day on GDQ's channel, uh, which I highly recommend I st checking out. I totally that just out. stole your kill. That's fine. Um, but it was really cool because we were able to have eight hours of Lord of the Rings runs, and there are just so many different games to be able to run that are Lord of the Rings. So, like, ow! That was rude. Um, so in this level, we are actually, like, we're purposely killing all of the enemies here. Because by killing all of the enemies, it will cause more to spawn in an area that we need enemies to spawn. It's a really weird... What? How did you not blow up? Well, that's never happened before. Okay. Oh my gosh, he said the thing. Um, but yeah, so there's a section we're gonna have to kill 75 Urukai, and um, in it, by killing the enemies earlier here, then they will spawn faster in that 75 section. So that's kind of just like another way that we can make things go faster because the time that you save from the, those extra spawns in this section here that we're going into is definitely worth the time lost to kill all the other enemies. All right, so in this section, the Ents will be doing a couple of things. They will be squishing orcs, and they will be squishing us. Uh, but the best way to avoid the Ents is, well, just, you know, not get hit by them. <laughs> um, Gee, what a But shocker. sometimes that can be kind of hard. But basically, if we just stay over here by, like, this left side... We'll be mostly okay, and then if we need to, we can, we have more than enough time to be able to just kind of like dip out and around to avoid getting hit. Uh, I got hit by something, but it wasn't an Ent, so I won't complain. Because Ents will do a lot of damage. They don't like insta-kill you, but they certainly don't feel good to get... Ow, I need some health. Thank you, game. The game's been pretty generous on health drops. It's actually kind of impressive. You probably could have had that. I. It's fine. Oh, look, there's another. Yeah, but you're at full, so you can't pick. You can't. You can't steal it even if you wanted to. This is I wanted. Ah, dang. So I gotta say this just because this is very important in this section. Um, so, as I've said a bunch, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd. I've been running Lord of the Rings games since. 2018, I have been a Lord of the Rings fan for uh, as long as I can remember. And so lore accuracy is important to me. And here comes my lovely wife, who decides to call the Ents tree people. And that just kind of hurts a lot inside, especially when I know that she does it just because it gets a reaction out of me. But it's fine. My wife's wonderful. She runs Lego the Hobbit with me. I can't complain <laughs> over tree people. I just want everybody to know that. That because your wife calls them tree people or that... What, what, uh, what do you want them to know exactly? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with telling that story. All right. But this is where Slade likes to throw for content. Blow the thing up. No, we're going to shoot everything... I just showed you up. You know, you didn't have to. But I did. But you didn't have to, Ow. But I did. All right, let's see if I can get this. This is a really hard strat that Slade's going to be going for. He has to bubble at, like, a very specific time, and it is very difficult for... Got it. Nice. It's very difficult for me to be able to cover because these towers here are just shooting arrows from everywhere and it is very hard to like actually s successfully cover them but he got the strat so we're good um normally the game would want you to destroy those towers but we don't because if we don't destroy the towers then we can oh gosh get away go away leave me be okay we good we good um but normally, in this section here, there would be archers that spawn, but because we didn't destroy the towers, the archers don't spawn. And then, while Slade starts attacking the... 
the dam. I am going to be killing this Berserker here. He's kind of a pleb. And then we just... Riveting content, I know. Unload our arrows into the dam to end the level. And we're just going to take out that guy because we can. Nice. And that ends uh, Road to Isengard. So, well, did you know Gandalf was off to the side there on the right? Yeah, he's like right. I, I'm pointing at my monitor as if anybody is going to be able to see it. But he's like chilling over there. It's totally fine. And, but, you know, definitely doesn't die by this r rushing wave of water Gandalf, that comes expect? in. It, no, he just is like, I, I'm going to head out. The dam breaks. And he just teleports. Yep. Which I guess he has done before. Yeah. He, he does has. it in the Fellowship of the Ring, so that's a thing. Hi, Christopher <coughs> Lee. I about made a Star Wars joke, which I'm like, nope. Were you about to say hi, Count Dooku? Yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. You could say hi, Count Dooku. You could say hi to Willy Wonka's dad. Um, you could say hi to Dracula. You could say hi to the inspiration for James Bond. Like... There isn't really anything that that man hasn't done, didn't do in his life. That's a fair point. Don't you guys love this riveting EXP screen? Yep. I kind of wish that we would have made a way to pull up donations, but that's okay. Make sure you guys are donating. Urban Arts is great. So continue, guys, to donate to this awesome cause. Uh, it's been really cool to be able to be here at Pace and see the way that this event has grown. Uh, for those who don't know, I ran uh, Spider-Man for PS1 way back in 2019 at the very first pace, uh, which was an absolute joy to be a part of. And now I haven't been able to be back until this event. And so to be able to be here and show off this game, which I love a lot, and being able to do a co-op run with my wife and a co-op run with my best friend has just been an absolutely <laughs> incredible thing. And so it's been great to see Are how this event is. Yes. It's been great to see how this event has grown into what it is. So continue to support GSA, guys. Um, donate. Come out to Pace. It's a great event. Uh, and, like, I'm so excited. I'll be hanging around here at Xanadu all day today. So I want you guys, like, come say hi and hang out and do all, all of the things. Um, oh, shoot. I need a timer so that way. Never mind. I can figure it out. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll just sing the song in our head. Yeah, so this level has, starts off with um, an auto-scroller that's about like three and a half minutes. We're going to be running around and kicking down ladders. Uh, normally, I can time it by like my split timers, which obviously I don't have my splits with me, which is fine. Uh, I haven't accidentally tried to split, which is good. Um, shout out to ZFG at Pace 2019, where he went to split during his Ocarina of Time run. Um, but... Uh, what what hap What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we play me. I play music on my stream during this level because this level is not the most interesting. And I play VeggieTales music, and they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard because obviously you can't really have a Lord of the Rings run without they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard or Gandalf the Sax guy. That's also a thing. That's true. Why don't you have that anywhere? Because it just is the same thing for two minutes, and like I know you've listened to it for two hours because yeah. you're kind of insane. Exactly. Um, but even two minutes of it can be a lot. For people who aren't crazy. Yeah, and you're, you're kind of crazy. I'm just kind of um, special. Sure, that's the word we'll use. Um, anyway, guys, also, too, coming up right after this is going to be the Banjo-Kazooie LTA tournament. It's going to be an absolute banger. Uh, I love the LTA tournaments. I think it is, in my opinion, the best way to do competitive speedrunning. So the fact that this is now becoming a lot more mainstream is super cool. So again, huge shout out to GSA for putting on LTAs. I would love to put on an LTA for a Lord of the Rings game, but I need more runners. So run these games so we can do this. This would be great. Um, it would be super fun to do. Like, could you imagine if we got enough co-op teams to do an LTA co-op? That would be so good. Yes. It would be amazing. I would love it. Oh, that one. So here we are now, kicking down ladders for about three and a half minutes, um, while in my head I am listening to my baby elf 
from VeggieTales to Lord of the Beans because it is the optimal uh, Lord of the Rings adaptation. Sorry, Peter Jackson. Sorry to the guy who made the 1980s. Sorry to Amazon and Rings of Power. Uh, you can't beat Lord of the Beans. Uh, but shout outs to VeggieTales. It's amazing. Why would I, I, I never thought I would ever give a shout out to VeggieTales at a gaming event, but here we are. Yep. Despite the fact that I run Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, this is the first time I've ever given a shout out to VeggieTales at a gaming event. Huh. Isn't That's, that weird to think about? Yes, yes it is. So basically how this level works, because you know, we can actually explain that during the auto scroller. Up in the top right corner, you'll see there is that meter of, there's that orc face and a meter. If that meter fills up, our wall becomes overran and we fail the level. And then along that, that little like funky little shape thing um, that I don't even know what I would say that that looks like. What do you think that shape looks like? Uh, Tetris block. Yeah, kind of like a Tetris block, excuse me. Um, that is like a map, so it will tell you where all of the different ladders are. Um, this is really weird not having my baby elf playing. I know, this right? This is kind of cursed, um, but it's fine. It is very dark up on the projector, so that's cool. Uh, I'm sure that's just a projector, though. Um, anyway, I don't even remember. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Something about baby Basically, elf. you don't want the uh, meter to fill. We, we're not too worried about it, though, because we can take out, like, a big group of enemies. Oh, my gosh. And I'm you gonna just made me waste my bubble. I literally made you waste your bubble. That's kind of funny. How dare you. Uh, but yeah, like we kill a bunch of enemies, it disappears, the meter drains, we don't kill a bunch of enemies for a while because we're like waiting for one to spawn, and then it, the meter fills up again. No big deal. We're actually getting pretty close to the end of the auto scroller right now, uh, which is funny that I know this, but I actually have the pattern of ladders memorized. So I can kind of figure out like where we are in the auto scroller just based around which ladders are coming up. Uh, that tends to happen when you've been running this game for a long time. Because um, unfortunately, there is no way. We, so oddly enough, one thing too that is really cool is we figured out that it is technically possible to skip this entire level. There is, an, there is a way that you can, there's like the end level trigger is active, but what you have to do is you have to get up above this really, really large invisible wall. And we figured out how to do it based on a trainer that was developed by, again, Sabuline Horizon. And we've been able to figure out that there's actually a lot of skips that could possibly happen. But we would have to figure out a way to, like, levitate up without using a third-party program. So, like, that kind of breaks that whole possibility. But it is nice to know that that is something that is at least doable. So now that we're here, we have to shoot the siege tower, which the shot's kind of weird. Four charge shots will take him out. The angle can be a little funky just because you can't really see it. Uh, but thankfully, we learn the angle by being speedrunners. And then we have th uh, three main, four siege towers we have to take out, and then we will start making our way to the end of the level. Um, Come on, come on, Slade. Come on, come on. One, two, three, four. Got it. We're good. We have two more. Hey, we are tied right now, in case you were curious. I was not, but dang. Now we are no longer tied. No! No, I missed him! Ah! Come we on. have to wait for the siege tower to spawn right now anyways. Oh. I'm two up. What you gonna do about it? Uh, cry a little bit. So now we gotta run over here because this siege tower has to spawn. Which, thankfully, it does because it actually resets our meter in the top right corner. Yeah. 
I really want to try and just get kills to see if I can. Oh! I'm like one off. Let's go. I can't hit the tower. I am missing the tower. What? Got it. Did you see that? Yes, I did. It bounced right off. That, what? Also, we tied. GG. So, yeah, one of the great things about playing this game casually is you can actually do the Legolas and Gimli thing, which is tie, uh, seeing who can get more kills uh, throughout each level, which is actually the way that I always played it as a kid. Um, it was super fun, and I got... Dang it, you Wait, got one what? more kill than where me? Where did I get that kill? I have no idea. I don't Gosh, know where. dang it. What? I pulled it out at the brink of Ty at the buzzer beater. Sojalix gets the last kill, and like it takes a victory lap, beating the soldiers down to the gate like an absolute pro gamer. Hacks. I call hacks. No, it's not hacks. No, I call hacks. It's not hacks. I don't care. It's I'm calling hacks. hacks. It's not hacks. I don't care what it's it is. I'm calling. I don't hacks. care. It's not. It hacks. has to be. It's a skill issue. No, 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 no. It is a. It's skill. not a skill it issue. It is. A I was right there with There's you. There's a dwarf in the audience. What? Is that Gimli? What Let's the go. heck? Let's That's go. That's so cool. Hi, Gimli. I'm so happy right now. I was not ready for that. I saw someone sitting there. I thought it was just a person with really long red hair. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> Shoutouts to Gimli. Um, in case you guys were curious, too, also, just a random fact out there. Um, I am also a freelance esports shoutcaster. So if you guys are doing any esports-related things and are needing a shoutcaster, I can cast pretty much anything. Um, you can check out, get information just by following my Twitter, at Zojalix. Uh, yeah, I'm going to plug that kind of stuff there because, dang. Come um, on. I want to, I want to grow as a shoutcaster. So I've done casting for GSA before. That's actually where I started, was casting the Celeste League um, back in 2018 and 2019. So I highly, like, I've been casting for a while. Nothing. Nothing. Um, so, Yeah. I would love to be able to cast more events. Um, I can, if, even if it's a game I've never played before, I'm always ready to learn. So the level that we're going into right now is a level where no matter how good a run is, your run's probably gonna die here. Not because of like really hard tricks or anything. This run just, is just an RNG mess. Uh, this is Minas Tirith Courtyard. It's about seven minutes of protecting these refugees. Um, the, we have to save, 200 of them, because uh, apparently that's the, the developers decided that 200 people get to survive. Um, yep. And so we are going to be doing that by just killing a lot of, our goal at speedrunners is just specifically crowd control. We don't necessarily have to kill enemies. We just don't want them to attack our refugees. So we're going to be doing everything in our power to keep our refugees safe. I am, there we go. But that can be kind of difficult because a lot, this level will get very chaotic. So we just kind of have to like, do all the arrows. Ha <laughs> ah, ha! An arrow drop despawned on me! Good job. Good um, job, arrow drop. Did you just say, wow. Yes, I did. So I have no remorse. Uh, with the amount of times you've stolen my arrow drops, I just don't care. It was in the name of content. It made a really good YouTube short, okay? I don't care what it made. Dude, you're gonna die. Yes, I am. Hey, look, health drops. <laughs> That's just a slap in the face. That was just an absolute slap in the face. I hate that. It was like you died, and then it was like an immediate double health drop. I hate that. That's hilarious. Like that, that, that couldn't, I couldn't have asked for anything better. So now we get a little bit of a break because there's gonna be archer spawning. Basically every like 20 enemies you get a new wave. Oh wait, what, where did the, what? What, why are you guys here? You're not supposed to be here. 
Well, so now Slade has taken our one safety death, so hopefully he doesn't die again. He died in the part that, like, it's easy to not die in. Don't give me that look. I'm going to give you that look. Don't give me that look. I'm giving you that look. But don't. I'm giving you that look. I don't care. Just, just don't. Nope. It's too late now. I gave you the look. The look has been given. But and like, then once we get to 80, then there's going to be enemies spawning back over in that corner. So I'm just going to kill an archer over here just so he doesn't mess up with my target locking. And we can just start sniping them. Slade tried to be cool, but it didn't work. It was somewhat cool. And... So we're getting close to the halfway point in this level, which is where the chaos actually starts. Um, because it's gonna be these orc captains. So orc captains, we've talked about the undead captains a little bit, which is just enemies with their own individual health bars. But orc captains differ because not only do they have a health bar that you have to deal with, they also have armor that you have wow. to break before you can, you're not gonna grab that, did you grab his health that he dropped? Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, all captains drop a health. Um, but you have, there's armor that you have to break first, which in one hand is like, is kind of cool, but at the same time, captains can be very scary. So we try to prioritize them sometimes, unless they're just like choosing to just not be involved in what's going on, then we just ignore them. Because like I said, our there. goal of this level is crowd control. Yeah, I know. There's two. There's three. The goal of this level is crowd control. So if we can, you know, control the crowd. Like right now, well, actually, he's going to have his armor broken from burning. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, get ready to move up to that top left corner. So we want to take out these guys here, and then at 135, we're going to get another wave shift here where enemies are going to be spawning here. Ow. And Slade's going to bubble. I'm going to go devastating just because we want... There's going to be a lot of enemies spawning here. And then, and since they're spawning in the same spot as the refugees, normally we just hang out over by that escape door, but we don't want to just hang out over by the escape door because doing that will then cause more enemy, like, will cause the enemies to attack the refugees, and we can't really protect them very well. That's, now we're at 150, so at this point, any sort of pattern is out the window. Enemies are going to be coming from anywhere and everywhere. Um, they're going to, trolls are going to be spawning, captains are going to be everywhere. And so even just like the word crowd control is just kind of a joke because there are just enemies all over this level. And our goal is just paying attention to where the refugees are spawning from and kind of adapting to that. But we also can't just like, they're spawning on the right side, prioritize right. We also can't just like avoid the main door so this whole level becomes just very difficult to kind of keep track of everything that's happening and there is a pattern for how the refugees spawn but at 150 you don't really think about that pattern you just think about mainly just trying not to die oh I need arrows like bad I didn't even, like, notice how bad my arrows were. Cool. Got more. I don't know why I just tried to go devastating. I couldn't even do it. Arrows over here. I'm fine on arrows now. Oh, okay. Watch your health. All right, Is the health drop to your left? 
good. I'm grabbing these arrows. Holy cow, was that like a good courtyard? We've n that felt so fast. It did, but we'll find out. We've never had one. We don't so. have our split, so, so we have no idea what our pace is right now. Um, but Ugh. that was crazy. Whew. Um, so this kind of ends the path of the wizard. We're going to be shifting back to the path of the king because we're going to be going to the black gate now. Um, and to get to the, we go into the Black Gate because going into the Black Gate is just the level that's available to us, but we can't go into the Black Gate until we beat Courtyard and Pelennor Fields. So in single player, that's also like a stipulation because you can't have Gandalf show up at the Black Gate when he hasn't gone through Isengard and everything first, which makes sense. Um, so that's totally fine. We're ready to go to the Black Gate, uh, which many people would think, oh, Black Gate, you should be close to the end of the run. No. Nope. Because we're, we're going to have to dip back to the end of the Two Towers movie again after this level. Um, because lore. Uh, yeah. You know what I just realized? What? The most, excuse me, the most lore accurate route that we actually did was the single player route that was, like, for some people, is still, like, their current route. Which was Helm's Deep, Path of the Hobbit up to Shieland's Lair, and then um, Path of the Wizard, and then Path of the King. Yeah. Yes, let's, let's go. Let's go. We skipped another EXP screen. That's like frame perfect every single time, I'm pretty sure. I don't even think I have. Oh, no, I can get that. And then you want Flame of Voodoo. Okay. Nope. So now we're here at the Black Gate. And in this level, so here I didn't get the glitch. But Gandalf is available as a character, so it doesn't, like, break everything. Thankfully, too, you can retry the glitch infinitely. It's really nice. That character wheel glitch makes this a significantly better run. I think our first, our first run, we ran with the Hobbits. Uh, Which we was We did it, like, the way the terrible. game wanted you to. And it was rough. I think we ended up getting, like, a 159 or something like that. Yeah, Hobbits are just not fun. They're squishy, they're clunky, they, they're a little, they're, especially at low levels, they're rough. You will get to see us play as hobbits for Crack of Doom because it just doesn't make sense to do a bunch of character wheel glitches for a level that you don't need to be super strong for. Um, so that's kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, so this is the Black Gate, another very, very chaotic level um, that can go pretty south just due to RNG, but at the same time, it's also much better RNG-wise than both Courtyard and Pelennor Fields. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, we're first going to be starting off with fighting the Mouth of Sauron. Um, Aragorn's going to step forward and then do nothing. Um, but we're going to be just doing this Orc Hewer loop on him, and he's just, the, the poor man's just going to get absolutely Bullied. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not on the right side. Yeah, the guy just can't do anything. I don't know why the devs, like, didn't give him any sort of, like, revenge value or something. Or, like, a retaliation attack. Because we or he or loop him, and it's just it's just over. Yep. He, he just he just can't do, do anything. And He's you kind of feel bad, but He's at the same time, like you a don't. Pinball. Yeah. Also, shout-outs to the Urukai who are clipping through the Black Gate. Um, that's kind do. of a, that's that's fun. They do that when you're a 2D sprite, I guess. So one of the reasons that Slade has been upgrading his "You Shall Not Pass" ability is honestly for this level, because a lot of this level will advance based on how quickly you're able to kill enemies. So any enemies that, like, get past me while I'm sitting here holding the line with my arrows, uh, Slade can just do the you shall not pass move and take out, like, a thousand enemies. And then usually I instantly go into perfect mode. Yeah. Which is really great. And then we can just take out... Uh, so the main goal for this level is we have to take out three captains. And there's one spawning right now, but I am pinned right now, which is not great. And he just absolutely destroyed Aragorn. 
But that's one captain down, and they will be spawning periodically. Uh, I think it's based around... Oh my gosh, I keep getting shot. I could actually use a health drop right now. I just took yours. Well, that was rude. Okay, I got one. I'm fine now. Um, but yeah, they'll be. I think their spawn rate is based on like how fast you're able to take out a bunch of enemies. So we're gonna be doing the best that we can to just take out as many enemies as we can quickly, trying to kind of like keep them like bottlenecked. And oddly enough, even with that you shall not pass move, I'm keeping up in kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because Legolas' bow is stupidly strong. We got a captain. His armor's broken. Nice. But yeah, once a captain shows up, we just drop all priority on every other enemy, which will make a bunch of them get through us, but that's fine. As long as our other party members here... Ooh, I need that, I yeah, need that, I need that. that, I need that. Um, as you can see, Aragorn and Gimli actually have a health bar now. So if they die, we do fail the level. The other like allies that we have, the Gondorian soldiers, they don't matter. The game doesn't care if they die or not, which actually I don't think they even can die. Uh, but we're just kind of doing a quick check, making sure everybody's okay. Aragorn's big chilling. There's not a wave coming. Um, so we're vibing, actually. Oh, here we go. More enemies. Got one, got two, there we go. Oh, I missed. That was some hefty lag there, wow. Oh, where'd he go? No idea. I can hear him. Yes, yeah, I am. It's fine. Stop it, stop Captain. it. Captain. I gotta take out this archer here, just for our sake. Good. Aragorn, get out of my way. <laughs> Aragorn just... I've never seen him play so far forward before. Oh my gosh. Shoot him. Okay. Nailed it. So, the, we're now like halfway through this. Um, now what's gonna happen is they split the line. Captains are gonna be coming in still through the front. And at this point, they're just going to keep coming and coming and coming, so we don't have to worry about uh, we don't have to worry about really fighting any other enemies. The biggest thing that we actually need to do is watch our arrow count. Also, spears are broken. So right now, I'm actually going to be kind of like trying to push for an arrow drop here. It's probably going to be a little bit hard to get one. Never mind. There is one. Perfect. Which we don't really need that many arrows. It's just this kind of a thing that's like nice to get for safety, uh, to have more of for safety. Because at the end of this level, we're gonna have to fight uh, three ring wraiths. Um, because you know that's what happens in the movie. There's Captain Number Five, and then we'll have Captain Number Six showing up and Seven because the game spawns two captains for some reason. We call that captain the captain that. The second one that spawns, his name is Chad, because he doesn't count towards your like captain count. And there were times where he would spawn right away, and we would kill him right away, and then nothing would happen. So now, there they both are. One of them's Chad, one of them is not. They're the exact same, so we have no idea which one is Chad. Uh-oh. No, this archer is being annoying. Okay, mine's dead. Mine's almost dead. I think yours was Chad. But the cool thing about killing Chad early is you don't have Chad. If Chad survives, he's in this ring ring fight. And that can be really scary. But Chad didn't survive to get there, so it doesn't matter. So now we can just kill these three ring rays. Which, in case you guys didn't know, uh, ring rays are distant cousins of the Wicked Witch of the West. Because when they die, they melt. See, they just melt. And then fade away like a force ghost. Yeah, but that's just, that's how like all enemies fade away. And that's the end of the Black Gate.
Um, now we're going to have an absurd amount of lag here because Gimli's going to be healing in this cutscene. And he's just going to lag a lot. It's a joy of a 30 FPS game. So, now that we're done with the Black Gate, it's time to jump back to the end of the Two Towers movie where Legolas and Gandalf are going to escape from Osgiliath. Yep. Yes, you did hear that right. Legolas and Gandalf are escaping from Osgiliath. Yeah, and the movies, right? Everything, yeah. Okay, cool. You guys remember. Cool. That's, that's what we want to know. Hi, Frodo. You have very blue eyes. <laughs> Bye, Frodo. Bye, Frodo. Uh, is Frodo even? Yeah, Frodo's in the level. He'll still, yeah. he'll still be there. Yeah, he'll, he'll still be around, and you'll hear Smeagol too. Yeah, so you'll see Legolas, Gandalf, Frodo, and Smeagol escape from Osgiliath. But the one character who would be there, Sam, he's just, he, he's just gone. Well, you see, because uh, Frodo said, I'm going to Mordor alone at, at Amon Hen, and Sam said, of course you are, and then left. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because that's what happens in yep. The Lord of the Rings. Yep. And at this point, oddly enough, we're actually done getting any upgrade. I think we have one more upgrade that Legolas can get. Holy perfects! Jeez! I might have perfected in this mission. Oh, gee, I, I wonder. Just maybe. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Dude, I, got, I got like double your perfects. Yeah, but I still got 84 kills. I don't care. You're, you're, you got bad skill. Uh, oh, wait, I don't have anything, and you don't have anything. Cool. Um, so... Yeah, we're going to be going into the Paths of the Hobbit, doing the, the cool things. So uh, this is going to be a massive series of character wheel glitches here. Hopefully I can get it. I immediately fail the first one. That is That's not a good cool. sign. Okay, there's one. We got to do this two more times. Oh, it's fine. I do it one more. Cool. It's such a cool. Gl I love the character wheel glitch because it just is so intricate to be able to, and I love how it lines up perfectly because mm -hmm. it, it lines up just the exact amount where we can still select Gandalf from that, which is really interesting to me, but. It's so cool. So cool. I love this game. I love this speedrun. I will speak its praises for way too long. Um, probably more than you need to. Y you know, is it ever too much? Like, we got Gimli in the crowd. You That's can't fair. really, That's like, fair. like, it just, everything is, see? Gimli's got the thumbs up. So, obviously, Gimli approves of praising of this speedrun. Okay. <laughs> I will admit, you win. So, also, we're kind of summarizing right now everything that happens in the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, Frodo decided that the Ring didn't want to stay in the Shire um, and decided to take it away. Uh, Pippin thinks using a stool is a great way to hit somebody with a sword. Well, then there's um, Merry with a candle. He does have the candelabra, but at least, like, you can maybe set him on fire. Right. But I don't think Merry was thinking that far ahead. I mean, you can break the stool over his head. Yeah, but in the fight of a... Oh, yeah... Gollum is Gollum. Don't worry about that. Uh, swords and evil people and ma well, well, magic elven ropes. That's that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think it's a real elvish rope? Obviously, it is. It's <laughs> one of his knots. Um, so as you can see, Sam is kind of sus of Gollum. I don't know why he would be sus of Gollum, who has been obsessed with the ring for. Literally centuries. Um, yeah, there's and no, re no reason to be concerned. No reason to be sus about it at all. Um, and uh, here's Faramir. He screams, and that's about all we'll see of him in the entire game. Yep. He has one Actually, line. no, that is literally the only thing that we see of Faramir. In this in uh, until you beat Crack of Doom and you unlock him as a character, yeah. that's all you see of Faramir. Yeah. And then Frodo just kind of walks off. Oh, I lied. Sam was here, but now he just disappears. Yeah, he doesn't stick around. He's like, bro, he's like, oh, well, it's over. I'm going home. I'm going to live out the rest of my life. Yep. And then for some weird reason, Frodo just kind of trips and falls. Just for no apparent reason. <laughs> Come on. Come on. 
Oh, look, there's Gandalf. Yep. So the nice thing about having Legolas and Gandalf in this run, at this point in the run, is Ow. A, they're uber, we're like level 8, level 9, which is really strong, because the highest level that you can upgrade stuff to is level 10. So we're like almost to being at like max abilities. Um, and Legolas and Gandalf's movement speed is significantly faster than any of the hobbits. So we can just run through these levels super quickly. And like the best thing about them is if you're playing as a hobbit uh, and you go down a ladder, they like climb down every single individual rung. Bigger people just slide down because they're like cool. Even like 6,000 year old Gandalf just, you know, the, ow. Just, okay, we're, we're, we're good, we're good. Well, I'm good. You you might not be. What are you doing? I'm just killing people. Don't worry about it. We have to get through this as fast as we can. Ow. Um. Ow. And then we're just going to run over here, and I'm going to get stuck on this ladder. And then every enemy is just going to disappear. Yeah, enemies just despawn. It's so weird. So this level actually does require you to move fast. Up in the top right corner, you can see there's this meter. If that meter fills up, we will fail the level, which is the Nazgul searching for us. We, oh, ow. I'm going the wrong way. We get rid of the meter by being, like, under a cover. I'm going to grab this yet yeah, green here. So now that we're, like, inside a building, the Nazgul won't find us, so that meter will drain. It's kind of a cool feature, but, like, as a kid, I will not be able to stress how many times that meter filled up on me, and it was kind of terrible. I think we had the meter filled once on us as a co-op team. Yeah, definitely did. But that was, like, in the very, very early days of running this game. Oh, hey, look, it's Frodo and Gollum. Yep, they're just they're just around. We're just gonna keep going. There are a lot of moments where like if one of us gets ahead, they'll kinda run where they know like a camera shift point happens, and then they'll just stop because trying to run in blind can A get you or your partner I that, stuck. Um, I totally just stole that from you. I'm sorry, but at fine. this point it's you should fine. be okay. I hopefully did not jinx us. Oh my gosh. Oh my oh gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna kill that guy just to be safe. All right, go for health on these two guys down here. I, no, just focus on getting, uh, well at this point we don't have to worry about the wraith meter anymore, so I guess it's up to you. Just go, just go. Okay. How did you stab him from there? Because I'm Gandalf, obviously. That made no sense! Thank you. So here we have to open up a gate. Um, we're kind of like waiting for the right moment for Gandalf to bubble. That was actually kind of terrifying, but now that Gandalf has bubbled, Oh, Ow. I, we both got hit. That's great. Go. All right, we got through. That's fine. That's fine. That yep. works. Yep, and Legolas and Gandalf are just going to stay behind. Yeah, Frodo's just going to kind of hobble off. See, Gandalf is over there getting attacked by orcs. You can see him back in the corner there. Uh, that's fine. He'll, he'll be fine. He's a wizard. Yeah. No, no big worries. Yep, I almost said he was a wizard, Harry, and which was completely wrong. Did you really about make a Harry Potter reference in a yes. Lord of the Rings Yes, I did, one? and my wife is happy, okay? Like, the biggest debate in, like, all of nerdhood is what's better between Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, and you dared to make that reference. Well, I thought about making it. I didn't technically make it. What? I no, thought about you, making you it. You kind of made it. Nah. I, I said I thought about making it. But, I just... Uh, word of advice to people looking at getting into co-op speedruns. 
Choose your partners wisely, because you never know if they're going to make a Harry Potter reference during a Lord of the Rings speed run in front of hundreds of people. Hey, you asked me to run this. I didn't really ask you. I just said, hey, we're doing this. Okay, you fine. Said, okay. You told me we're running this. That literally, I kid you not, for everybody who is in the audience and in chat, that is exactly what happened. I said, hey, we're going to run this game. And you said, what is this game? And I said, it's this game, and we're going to speed run it. And you were like, uh, okay. Yep, and that's how I got into speedrunning. Yep, by literally having no other choice. Yes. So it's great. So that's the end of Os Gilead. We have actually only three more levels left in the run. Yeah. Um, we have Sheila's Lair, Kidith Ungle, and Crack of Doom. And the next level that we're going to be doing, Sheila's Lair, is the worst. Um, it sucks. How did I not level up? Because you, cause you're fat, boy. I have so many questions. Like, I'm, like, teetering right there at a level up. I know. I feel kind of robbed. You should. But at the same time, we don't need the level up for this level, so it's kind of whatever. <laughs> nice. Yay. Remember, don't go too fast, otherwise the game will crash. We discovered that during a run, like, back in, like, 2019, we crashed the game accidentally. And it was really funny because we weren't ready for it at all. There were multiple things that happened while doing this run that we've not been ready for. Yeah, this game continues, despite being a pretty straightforward speedrun, this game does continue to surprise you in multiple different ways. And it's one of the ways that we both love and hate this game. Yep. All right, so Shulib's Lair. Uh, if there's anybody, whether you are in chat or you are here in the audience and you struggle with looking at spiders, now is the time to look away for a few minutes because um, there's going to be a lot of spiders. One of them is really big and actually kind of creepy. So yep. it is perfectly okay if you guys need to look away during this. Um, it, it's, it's big spooky. So, yeah. Um, but for those who are still here watching, uh, this level is another level where in a lot of instances, a lot of runs will come to die. And not really so much, any, not really so much in co-op because you're just so daggum strong. Um, but this level does have a lot of weird things that can happen. Are we going to get the camera glitch? No? Camera yep, glitch. Camera glitch. Sometimes the camera just doesn't follow you there, and you have to take an entirely different route through the spider's maze here, which is kind of rough, but at the same time, it, it's whatever. Like, you can't really do anything about it. Uh, ow. Oh, gosh. Where are we? I'm just following you. Bro, I completely lost track of where we are, but I think I know where we are now. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. We're fine. So I'm going to pick up a torch, throw a torch here, and get stuck on the spider pit. Pick up a torch, yeet it through the wall, and to hit this web. Ow. And then we can keep going. There's also all these enemies here, but for some reason, they, nobody sees us. I really thought you were about to dump that fire and send them all barreling on top of us. No, 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 no. I, don't, I, I, I might throw for content, but it's not that much. Are you sure? Well, maybe. And then this is a little clump of enemies that we can't avoid. Ow, ow, ow. Why'd you get hit, man? See, there's a spooky spider. That's a close-up on Sam that's not there. Yep. And then we're just going to hit a bunch of enemies here. Take them out, because dealing with them is obnoxious. I'm gonna, I don't know why I picked up that torch, but I guess it worked. You did not kill that spider. Got it. No. Pick up that torch, and then pick up this torch. Ow. Oh, what? I totally thought that guy was dead. Ow. 
My health is kind of spooky right now. So one of the nice things about Shilam's Lair is the game acknowledges like how hard this level actually is, and they actually give you two deaths to work with. So you can die twice. Now, you cannot, however, die at the same time as co-op partners. So if I'm in my 10 second respawn, and then Slade were to die, we would fail the level. Oh, that's cool. Sweet. And you, can, you don't even have enough health to jump through. Nope, I do not have enough health to jump through. So I'm going to wait for this torch to respawn here. Throw it here. So for some reason during the single player run, you can actually do what we did during fog hops and then just jump right through. However, in co-op, it just deletes your health. Yeah, you don't have to you don't have to charge shot these archers, by the way. Ow. Uh, oh, green, green, green. Oh, green. <laughs> that, that makes me feel better. Makes me feel a lot better. I just I saw that and all my thought was green. <laughs> So Please. now we get to fight Shelob, big spooky spider who is webbing up Frodo. Look at him. He's taking a nap. Uh, and how we're going to fight him is we just or cure him to hurt him a bunch. He's going to hit me because, ow. And then Sam's going to stab him in the eye, stab her in the eye. Um, and, oh, my health, my health is back to red already. That's fun. And then Shelob's going to run up here. I'm going to shoot her. She's going to drop down. And then Slade is going to do his You Shall Not Pass on her to do a lot of damage. And while he's doing that, I will do an Orc Cure, ow, to do a lot more damage and advance the phase immediately again. And then we're going to do the same thing. And that will get us into, that will finish off her second phase, where she's now going to be so mad that she's just going to start running around in a real ow. frantic rampage. And while she's doing that, I'm just going to kill some of these spiders just to get them, like, away from us because they oh, can be kind of obnoxious. And then Slade is no longer able to slam because it takes 10 of his arrows in order to do it. So from here, I'm going to go into devastating mode and just get a whole lot of damage off onto Shelob to oh, advance her into her final phase. Dang. And then one more quick shot. She drops down. I come over. Oh, she hit me, but my rising attack finished her off. That was a really good Sheila fight. Very good. <laughs> Ignore Legolas and Gandalf in that cutscene. Yep. <laughs> big stretch. Got to take the big stretches where I can. So now Frodo is going to get taken to Kiddith Ungle, and we are going to have to... Legolas and Gandalf are going to have to go save him. Yep. Also, I'm finally getting my level up, which is nice, because I can get my final upgraded arrows, which are mithril arrows, and they are so strong. Because they pierce through enemies and set them on fire. If I were to be level 10, then I could shoot two arrows at once, which is really great, but it still costs two arrows, so it really doesn't actually change really anything. Um, I think it would have been great if you could shoot two arrows, but it still only costed one. Yeah, that that would have just made Legolas way too overpowered. Oh, yeah. And I don't think you leveled up, which I think is good. We don't want you to level up right now. <laughs> nice. I will definitely level up next level, though. Yeah, which is fine. You can't, like, avoid any level, like, every level up. Okay, nothing. What? Excuse me? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I am so confused right now. I, that, <laughs> that has definitely never happened before. That is a first. And this <clears throat> is also the final set of character wheel glitches in the run. Wow. Dang it. It was going so well until the very last one. Yeah. But here we are, going into Kidith Ungol, which is a really cool... Oh, for those who are afraid... Uh, 
Don't like watching spiders. Spiders are gone now. You're good. You can come back. Come back and finish the run with us before we get into the Banjo-Kazooie LTA tournament. It'll be great. Um, I'm really excited for that. Uh, so, yeah. So, in this level, we have to take out 80 orcs, um, which is a thing. Ow. Tubby, it, get... It, are you struggling? I am... I cannot hit Tubby. There. Grab his health. Grab his health. So, normally in this level, you would be playing it as hobbits, which would require you to go and... Um, which would require you to go up and drop a chandelier. And that we don't want to do because it takes a lot of time. And they're actually, thanks to the joys of the character wheel glitch, we can actually skip having to drop the chandelier. So what's going to be happening is we're going to get over to it by taking out a lot of enemies here. Um, and a lot of these enemies will actually just be taking out with the same methods that we would be using as the hobbits, just because we can, like, drop fire on them and then leave them. I'm trying to just, like, take out the ones that, like, aren't getting burned, though. Um, so, like, we can drop this fire pit, shoot a bunch of arrows to take out a bunch of enemies. I'm actually going to come over here and shoot at these guys. So we can run into this hallway here. And Slade is going to go and, oh boy, bubble up, run into the center room here, and then use his You Shall Not Pass ability. And this area that normally has a bunch of enemies in it that you would have to take out with the chandelier, just get absolutely decimated by his You Shall Not Pass ability, which apparently not as many got killed as we would have liked, but it's fine. So now we've already taken out 60 enemies, which is really cool. This is actually like a really sick level in the speed run. Uh, there should be a green health over there. I'm like trying so hard to like not steal it. Because <laughs> now at this point we can just run through and we don't have to worry about actually killing any more of these enemies because there's gonna be a barrel that we can drop on the enemies here uh, that will take out the final 10 that we need. And I'm just going to let Slade drop it. So if I, it'll see. work. There it is. Because then I can be up here. Because I'm not the even going to worry about going up because for some reason it just force teleports me back down. It makes no sense. So like in every single run, Slade will say, force teleport, activate. And, and he's I'm just way back, back there. down there. It, it, it's a thing. Yep. Is it a good thing? Not really. Is it a thing? Yeah. And then we have to shoot this catapult here to clear out this bridge of enemies. We can't just go through and like bubble our way through. And then we have to be very careful to line up specifically because if this happened to us in one of our early runs, if, you, if one player is too slow, they will fall and you will fail the level. But thankfully, we got through it because we take that split second to line ourselves up. Remember yeah. to bubble right away for this fight. So this is Gorbag. It's a really annoying fight. Slade is going to bubble up and take out his shield while I get hit. Or, and then, yep, there we go. And now we're going to just absolutely wail on him, which he didn't do nearly as much damage as I was hoping. Maybe we bubbled too early. I don't know. Uh, just use your range attack. It is possible the one cycle gore bag when Ah! One more shot! No! <laughs> Got him. That was so close. Uh yeah, it's possible the one cycle him at any percent. It's really hard. So getting a three cycle is still just fine. And Yeah, standing on Frodo. Gandalf is standing on Frodo. <laughs> and Frodo shifts slightly in that part of the cutscene. And Legolas is standing on a floating sword. Yep. You almost just, like, stuck your staff right on Frodo's kneecap. That would have been funny. Yeah, so how that exactly happens is when you're not playing as the characters that the game intends you to play as, they just don't show up in the cutscenes. So instead of them being there, it's them invisible. That's why an invisible Sam stabbed the eye of Shelob, and there was an invisible Gimli in one of the scenes where he was speaking, but you didn't see him. It was kind of a whole thing. 
Cool, I didn't level up. I did. Maybe. Yeah, you definitely did. With your with your slam there, you definitely leveled up. So now we are going into the final level of the run, where we are going to be going into the Crack of Doom, which um, there's so many jokes you can make about that. I'm not going to worry about it because it's a family-friendly stream. Yep, you can um, just make them all at home. Yep, and basically what it is is we're going to be Frodo and Sam. So after everything is all said and done, Frodo and Sam still make it to Mordor. And we are going to be going to fight Gollum uh, for possession of the ring. So, yeah, this is where everything all comes together at the very end of the game. And I'm really, it's cool. It's really great because this has been a great run, actually. And now we get to show off. I love being able to show off this game. Um, this is like one of the first games I ever ran, um, and to be able to show it off here at Pace, which has become just such an incredible event for me, uh, it's always just so unforgettable, and I love being able to be here. Shout outs to you guys in the crowd for being here in the morning, watching this run. We really appreciate it. Uh, Gollum just bit off Frodo's finger, so that's sad, but yeah. it, you don't see it because they wouldn't dare take off his finger. Um, and now we have to, oh, beautiful. And basically what has to happen is we're gonna be actually doing a manipulation for Gollum. At, so these first two phases are pretty random, but after that, there actually is a, manip a way that we can manipulate Gollum to be exactly where we need to be, because he only takes damage when he falls off the cliff. So we're gonna kind of like lead him over here we want him, yep, this is about what I would expect here. Okay, this is what we want. We want him to do this jump attack. And then once he's like leaning back over the edge, we hit him with a fierce attack and then we can stab him. And then at the end of every single phase, we're going to run over here to the start of the bridge area until we hear Gollum growl. And then we move over, we'll hit him, and then it will manipulate him to do what we need him to do. So we hit him once, he's gonna run over, He's gonna jump attack. And we just are gonna be rinsing and repeating this for the next few minutes. Uh-oh, I'm stuck on the lava. Ow, ow. But Slade's focus is just specifically on getting over to the cliff edge. Oh. So that way he's just there and ready in case Gollum decides to go after him. Ugh. And we only have actually two more times that we have to do this. So time will be coming up here very quickly. Whoa, Gollum, that was not the attack you were supposed to do, but it worked out. Bye-bye. Whew. All right, All right, so time will be coming up here in just a little bit. Going to be running over here. Gollum, OK. Get ready on time and time. <laughs> we just PB'd by over two minutes. Let's go. Oh, I, okay, okay, oh. hold on. So earlier today, another team submitted a different run. We were off world record by 20 seconds. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they got a 131.01. Wow! Dang! What a run! <laughs> oh, oh, I saw what I saw that we were at like 128 going yeah. to crack a doom. I was yeah. like, we're on a 131 pace. Oh no! <laughs> so that was Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh. Thank you guys, crowd, for being here. Uh, this has been an absolute joy to be able to speedrun this game here for you guys here at GSA. Um, 
Yeah, so actually, wait, no. Technically, if we're counting our console PB, this is a five minute PB. Oh, our yeah. Our emulator PB was two minutes. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, GSA, for letting us show off this run. This game has been so much fun to speed run, and to be able to get a time like this in a marathon is actually yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, and shout-outs to the Lord of the Rings community. I want to give huge shout-outs to fellow Return of the King runners, Yamada, Dino95HD, Maxi Lobes, Mr. Poe, Mr. E, and Billy Poe, Crazy, and Anku. I think I mispronounced that, but that's fine. Um, also, Lord of the Rings trilogy coming out like yeah. 2004. Are you guys be excited for, Lord of the for that. Rings trilogy coming in 2004. Awesome. Isn't that amazing? It's gonna be an awesome trilogy. Cannot wait to see it. Um, and then, as always, huge just huge shout outs in general to just like the speedrunning community. It's been so amazing. I've been speedrunning since fall of 2017, and it's so cool to be able to be at these events and to show off just this fantastic game that I have loved since I was a child, and. Um, uh, shout outs to my family. I don't know if any of them are actually watching, but they've been huge supporters of me speedrunning for a long time, despite the fact that it's very weird and not normal and is definitely costing me more money than it has ever brought me in. But that's okay because it's fun and it is still very worth it. Um, yeah, and also shout outs to all the Banjo Kazooie runners who are going to be showing up in the LTA tournament. Speaking of, I think they're all walking out here right now. And I want to give shout outs to them mainly because Banjo Kazooie was my first ever speed game. So to have this now show up here as an LTA is super cool. And so, yeah, speedrunning is great. Video games are great. Thank you. My name is Zojalix. I am a speedrunner, Lord of the Rings speedrunner, as well as a freelance esports shoutcaster. So if you want any esports shoutcasting, hit me up. I would love to be able to shoutcast any and all video games speedrunning related. Uh, Speedrunning is included in that, so if you are hosting tournaments or anything and just want more commentators, feel free to hit me up. You can follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash and you can also hit me up on Discord. Uh, that'll do it for all my shout-outs. I don't know if you've got anything. I got one shout-out, special shout-out to my wife for coming out with me uh, to help, to help uh, support and watch because she's never been to one of these, and this is my first time here, so very happy to have her. Uh, yeah, follow me on uh, twitch.tv slash the spectacular Slade. I haven't been streaming recently, but looking to get back into it. So we'll see if it happens. And with that, thank you guys again. Make sure you guys are supporting Urban Arts and all of GSA. We'd love to see more people out here at this event. Please do come. We love this event. And with that, enjoy the LTA today, guys, because it is going to be sick.